This channel is made possible through the support of generous listeners just like you. If you would like to be a part of helping us bring our message of hope, peace, love, and spiritual truth to the world, please consider heading to experienceofthesoul.com slash support where you can join us as an ongoing patron or simply make a one-time gift. Blessings on the journey, dear friend. Natural Awakenings Magazine and Zen Living Realty present The Authentic Spiritual Journey, a weekly show featuring real and practical spiritual conversations from diverse perspectives here on the Experience of the Soul podcast channel. Today, episode 98, Be Where You Are. And now your host, Rev. Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey. My name is Cynthia Alice Anderson. I am the host. I'm here in my home studio with my producer. Hello, everybody. This is Dave Croft. Welcome to The Authentic Spiritual Journey 098. And I hope that you are well, safe, healthy, riding out the coronavirus lockdown, quarantine, however you want to yeah. think of it. But uh, no, yeah. we're doing great. Yep, and I and I'm still lifting up all the countries. You know, um, one of the things I've always uh, been very aware of is the world at large. Yeah. Ever since I was a teenager, I mean, I've been reading. I would always read the paper about what's going on in other countries. I've traveled to other countries since I was about fourteen or fifteen, and so I'm I'm um, unlike so many Americans. I'm, <laughs> I'm laughing because it's embarrassing. Uh, unlike so many Americans who you know. Uh, don't know anything other than up there for Canada um, <laughs> and, and things like that, uh, even though we do share a continent. Um, you know, uh, I am always have always been keenly aware of the rest of the world. And so uh, wherever you may be, um, our hope, obviously, is that you are safe, that you are well, and we are holding you in prayer. We'll always hold our world in world in prayer. And especially when something's going on, we just, our hearts go with you. We always seek ways to be of service, to support you, to lift you up. And hopefully you are sensing, feeling, and then even sharing the shows that we've done recently, because it has been with all of our viewers in mind. And in my view, especially viewers around the world, because we are in this thing together and never have we known our oneness more than we do right now. Wouldn't you say, Dave? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's good, you know, now now that now that we've lived with this for two and a half yeah. months now, I guess it would be, you know, as far as it impacting our daily lives, it's good to see um, it's good to see good news getting out there. And there's a YouTube channel that's that is uh, is run by John Krasinski, who was Jim on The Office, and it's yeah. called Some Good News. Yes, I've and, seen it. You yeah, know, I've, I've, I've so said good. for years we need something called nothing but good news. Yep. So. And so uh, we'll put a link to that. But that's been my weekly kind of, you know, my uh, my my soul bleach, if you will. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you yes. know, just to kind of just kind of uh, wash everything away when I'm feeling like, man, things are going really sideways. To uh, to to get a constant story of people across the world just just being. I've heard it said being bros to each other, you know, humans being bros, you know, is what exactly. it is. Just being cool, being kind, being generous, giving back, and uh, selflessness. So that's been yes. That's been well, you know, it's nothing like a tragedy to bring people together. I mean, I've mentioned before during this time that um, after Pulse, after the shooting in Orlando, we saw our city come together more than we ever had, and I I think it was because so much of the population was impacted. You know, many people said that was an attack on gay people, and certainly that was an impetus. But it was also Latin night, and as all of us knew that live in Orlando, Pulse was a place for everyone. Mm -hmm. They're straight couples, a white, a black, um, certainly LGBTQ, um, it's certainly um, a Latinos, you know, and, and several people from our congregation, in fact, intended their mother and son would go dancing on Latin night for mm -hmm. something, you know, right. fun uh, to do as a family. So, so uh, the city as a whole was really impacted. And I saw the city come together and I've seen that now with the world uh, in this. I, th I think the exception seems to be, uh, and I'm just going to say this because of today's show seems to be the politicians. Mm. <laughs> the politicians are the only ones I see not, um, not in some way trying to help each other. And uh, that's, 
disheartening, and yet that's just where we are. Yeah, and you start you start seeing like uh, like West State. Uh, West Coast states kind of banding together and Northeast yep. states kind of banding together and saying, look, federally, we're not being taken care of or we're being sidelined or marginalized or whatever. So right. let's let's be bros to each other, right? <laughs> you, you know what I mean by that. But let's, yeah, let's of kind of start creating these coalitions. And that's really amazing on one hand. It's a little terrifying on the other hand. Uh, yes, because there's the, no federal uh, support. <laughs> like mm-hmm. the, last, the last time, historically— State mm-hmm. started saying, "Hmm, maybe we should coalesce to each other." Uh, it it didn't end well for all involved, <laughs> but yeah. uh, but no, it's been it's been really great. I, I what's really sitting with me right now is trying to think how regular how regular life is going to be impacted on the other side of this. Like we we can we can directly trace the fact that we have to take our shoes off on a plane directly to the 9-11 attacks. And the fact that Disney World has metal detectors, I mean, that is a direct result of, of uh, things that have become normal resulting mm-hmm. from uh, the 9-11 attacks. And I, and I start thinking, what, what are the normal things that are going to carry through? Like, are, are medical face masks, face masks just going to be just totally normal? It's going to be totally normal to have a medical face mask and gloves uh, wherever you are, in your car, in your home. And I'm talking like well beyond, you know, when a vaccine is done and all of that, well beyond that. that that's one thing I, I see being normal from here on. And so yes. that, that's been really sitting heavy with me. Like, I wonder how our life is going to change on the other side of this. Well, and I think, Dave, that's a great lead in to, as, as you so typically do, not knowing anything about what I'm going to say. <laughs> To today's show, I was going to say message, um, today's show. Um, as you know, all of our shows are spiritual conversations among friends, and our goal is really to reawaken consciousness to love, acceptance, and peace. This is always what we're trying to do. Um, and so today's show is entitled, Be Where You Are. Be Where You Are. And it was an important title for me um, for a number of reasons. One um, I think as a culture anyway in the U.S., and I'd love to know from our um, viewers, our listeners from around the world, in the U.S., I feel people cannot hold their feelings. This means that if I have anger, then there must be somebody to blame. Mm. You know, we see this with the U.S. president all the time. I mean, this is like an egregious example of that. It, uh, it's like when a classroom teacher can't control their classroom and they blame the students instead of taking responsibility for their teaching skills. Um, and, and, and there's two things as a, on, on the whole that I see Americans having a hard time with. And, and again, friends around the world, uh, we want to know your experience is, Americans cannot hold their fear or their anger, and that is very, very dangerous because when we can't hold our fear, there has to be someone to blame. And usually when we are in anger, that's simply a cover for the fear. But then if we feel anger and we can't own it, we can't be with it, then it tends to go outward. That's how abuse happens. That's uh, uh, ultimately how terrorism happens. You're not how I want you to be. Mm -hmm. And I can't deal with how you are, so I will take you out. I mean, this sounds overly simplistic, but I've really learned over the years of working with people how the human psyche works. And the, you know, what we see later as abusive situations did not always start out, uh, you know, that way. They started with a kernel of a feeling that could not be dealt with, sat with, been present to. And when that's the case, then everything is going outward. And I'll 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 be honest, it's difficult to sit with your feelings. And uh, actually, next month, we're going to be bringing on a guest. Um, She's a a psychotherapist. Her name's Donna Bevan-Lee, who I learned so much about this from, She's written a great book, and we'll, we've already mentioned it one show. We'll, we'll really highlight it in that show when she's here. But um, she taught me so much about sitting with your feelings. So be where you are means I know how I feel, and rather than running, rather than checking out, rather than uh, uh, going into my addiction, you know, that's 
all addictions are from not being able to sit with what's happening. Hmm. And when we grow up in situations that are difficult, well, our addiction probably saves our life because otherwise we would, you know, kind of split off and not be able to handle what was happening. So like our soul is so brilliant because it figures out ways to deal with what's happening. Well, the problem is as we grow and mature and we're still using these old ways of dealing with things, um, you know, we're, we're trying to solve adult issues and run adult lives with seven-year-old thinking. So this idea of being where you are is very important. It's important for our sanity. It's important for moving forward. It's important for health. It's in, certainly important spiritually. If I'm not taking responsibility for where I am, then I have to have someone to blame. I see it all the time in marriages, in relationships. Again, we see it right now in governmental leaders. Mm -hmm. and, and have been for some time. So this is an important concept. Be where you are. You hear me speak so often about your feeling check-in. Why would I talk about it so often? Why would I? Because it matters how you feel. As a matter of fact, in our classes, we've been doing, um, many of you are in my class on, on uh, this happening on Wednesday nights, and in the classes, there's <clears throat> quite a bit of discussion about our feeling journal. It's not just something we do and then put down and forget. There, there's actually your own soul learning that can be gleaned from looking back at how you feel. Now, on the same token, as I'm saying all of this, and, and Dave, we've talked about this a little bit before, so, and you, you were surprised I said it, so I want to, I want to preface <laughs> it by, by how, however you feel about it, I'll be okay. That, that, that sometimes right now people are so like, I feel this, therefore you should change. Okay, I'm not saying that. And I'm saying that when we feel something, we need to be responsible for it, knowing that if I have a feeling, it's showing me something about me. You know, I feel mad, so Dave, you need to change. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? No, I feel mad, therefore I'm going to see what's there for me. And, um, you know, with the pandemic... What I see happening a lot is, um, you know, on Facebook, everybody's blaming Bill Gates at this point, which I find fascinating. Um, uh, uh, so there's a lot of blame game going on because it's easier to blame than it is to deal with how I feel, which is completely out of control. Which Anybody, is, yeah, it's understandable. Yeah. I mean, and, and right now there's, there's been a lot of control wrenched away from us. From us all, you can't just go outside. You can't. You can't even line up to check out at the grocery store. It's all lined out for you. That that Publix uh, the other day. You can't go one way or the other down the aisles. They have they're they're one way streets. The aisles are now one way streets. So that's just a small example. But control has been wrenched away from us, and so that leaves you feeling like a victim, and mm -hmm. yes. and things which are which you wouldn't expect to kind of stick on you. Like that one-way street thing down in the Publix, that really bothered me. I totally understand. It's not rational at all, but right. I needed to go. I needed to, it's right there. What I need is literally right there, but I can't go that way. And so I got to walk all the way around and I am inconvenienced, right? And so, so yeah, right. it's, it's, that's being wrenched away from us. Well, exactly. And so it does give us a feeling of, you know, out of, out of control. And, um, you know, I always, uh, go back to this friend of mine, um, that I knew in ministerial school, his name, name, uh, he would be happy with me sharing his name in the story. I have his permission. He was from Cuba and his name was, or Cuba, which is the right way to say it. He taught me not Cuba, he would say <laughs> Cuba. And uh, his name was Enrique Gutierrez and Enrique, um, held a unity church service in his home in Cuba. And 
at that time, it was actually against the law. And the, re the reason it was against the law is when Castro took over, if a religion wasn't already founded during that time, no new religions, no new denominations could start. I mean, it was actually illegal to meet, uh, to worship. And so Enrique had a study group in his home and, you know, Unity Books. He had gotten uh, books from Unity Village and was teaching and had a large group. Well, there were from time to time they had to go and worship in the woods uh, away from any authority and away from any city. So nobody would, you know, know what was happening. So he was jailed, I don't know, two or three different times uh, during the course of his ministry there. And one of the times he was jailed, and, and, and let me first say, in the U.S., we can't even imagine what a jail is like under Castro. I mean, you know, um, very little food, no A.C. I mean, you know, our, our, our inmates here in the good old <laughs> U.S. of A. In comparison, better, right. Yeah. It's uh, compared to other countries, you know, like three squares and uh, three square meals a day and the A.C. and all the TV you want and the Internet and all that. So, so no, for Cuba now, um, we're talking dirt uh, floors, we're talking no AC, we're talking often no clothing, you know, just very, very vulnerable situation. So as he was in the um, jail there, every day the guard would come to check on him and he would be smiling. He would be smiling. And, and the guard would say, Man, something wrong with you, you know. <laughs> well, the whole time he was in there, of course he knew his situation, what it was. But he was affirming freedom, and he said, no one can imprison my mind. Finally, this is after a few weeks, the guard came, same guard, and unlocked and said, come out. And he goes, what do you mean? And the guard said, we, we, we don't have any impact on you. Leave, leave, mm. just go, just go. And, um, you know, his first words to the guard were, you know, I am free. And that was his affirmation. That was his situation the whole time there. Why am I telling you this? Because outside circumstances don't decide who and what we are. They don't decide even our situation. So I'm saying be where you are. Acknowledge that. Be where you are. And as we are where we are, there's also a higher truth going on at the same time. So we'll get to more of that second half. What I want to say about be where you are is the lie we tell ourselves is if I'm, if I'm in this feeling, this feeling is going to take me over and I won't be able to move out of it. Like I have people tell me in one-on-one -on -one sessions, I'm afraid if I start crying, I won't stop. I said, you'll stop. They said, well, how do you know? I said, because I've been there myself. Mm. You will stop. You may cry a lot. But until you cry, whatever is behind that cry is running your entire life right now, right? So we're running from whatever the feeling is and feelings come and go, which is another reason I'm always talking about the feeling check-in. You will see you are up, you are down, you are mad, you are glad, you are joyful, you are scared. You feel powerful, you feel helpless, you feel vulnerable, you feel strong. All those feelings come and go. You feel helpless, you feel hopeful. You feel successful, you're scared you don't know where your next paycheck is coming from. Hmm. And yet, there you are. There you are. So we want to be, we want to be able to be with whatever is coming up for us without running. We want to be able, as we're feeling those feelings, to also know there's something bigger, something grander going on. So that as we're holding these feelings, meaning I'm not running from them, meaning I'm not blaming anybody, meaning I'm just being with it, as we sit in those feelings, then we finally have a powerful choice to make. 
But first, we have to be where we are. First, we have to be where we are. So if you're feeling a little helpless right now, allow that feeling to be there. If you're feeling angry right now, allow that feeling to be there. Without shaming, without blaming, without going outward, without um, somebody needing to be wrong, just be with the feeling. Just be with the feeling. So right now, ask yourself, how do I feel? Can I be with where I am? Honestly, can I? Can I be with where I am? How do I feel? So as we come back, we're going to give you some tools to deal with the feelings. One is going to be very surprising to you, I'm sure. And then I'm going to be also helping you with saying there's also a grander, this word is coming to me today, a more grand um, a reality that maybe you haven't tapped into yet. So we're excited you joined us today. Uh, be where you are, and we'll be right back. We'll return to the program in just a few moments. But first, we wanted to give a special word of thanks to our podcast partner, Natural Awakenings Magazine of Central Florida, Greater Orlando. Each month, Natural Awakenings Magazines across the country take a practical look at the latest natural approaches to nutrition, fitness, creative expression, personal growth, and sustainable living. Natural Awakenings Magazine is a free publication and is available in selected stores, health and education centers, healing centers, public libraries, and wherever free publications are located. You could learn more, including advertising opportunities for your business, by calling 407-628-0705. We'd also like to extend our special thanks to Zen Living Realty. Zen Living Realty's mission is to mindfully serve, connect, and positively impact their customers, partners, and community through their Zen approach to real estate. Their vision is to be the most trusted real estate brokerage in the Central Florida area. You can reach Zen Living Realty at zenlivingrealty.com or call 407-800-2717. And now we return you to this week's episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey with your host, Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. Hello and welcome back. Um, I'm still Cynthia Alice and I'm still in my <laughs> home studio with my producer. Hello, everybody. And, yeah, we're glad you're with us. Um, you know, it's so different to be doing this show from home, Dave. I, I still, it's, I feel like in a way I'm inviting our uh, viewers, our listeners in, in a different way, you know, to our hearts and, and into our show. And today's an important one because the title is Be Where You Are. And I want to give you some, um, some tools to help you do that, to help you do that. If, if you're like most of us, you don't have a single model <laughs> for how to hold your feelings. Um, one of the things I've seen though, um, when there's somebody I think of that's wise, there's there's a couple things that separate them from other people. One, well, maybe there's three. One is their love of humanity. Two is their faith. And three is their ability to hold their feelings. What I mean by that is they're not controlled by the up and down um, nature that... Uh, that feelings uh, can cause us to do, you know, I'm happy. Therefore I love everybody. I'm sad. Everybody needs to go to hell, um, <laughs> you know, or I'm mad and it's this damn system. So I'm not saying there are not issues that need to be addressed in our system. As a matter of fact, I'm one of the first people to say there are issues that need to be addressed. But if we're addressing issues from this place of blame, no one's ever going to hear us. No one is. And it has to be dealt with from a level head with a real wisdom, you know, um, leading the way. So I want to back up. If you're watching on YouTube, you see I'm holding a little stuffed animal with, with me right here. Uh, this is Bunny. <laughs> and and Bunny has some um, things to help you with. This may seem cheesy to you. I don't care. <laughs> it's not cheesy at all. This is of what we call inner child work. 
This is what we call inner child work to have work with Bunny. And here's what I mean. Many years ago, when I was first learning about having feelings and I was first learning to be with them, and I, I think I've shared with all of you about having a feeling check-in and how I would do it on the way to work, you know, and maybe at lunch and on the way home. And, and then in the very beginning, I didn't even know how to say what a feeling was, right? So how could I be with it? Feelings, there were no feelings. I just helped whoever needed to be helped and worked my job and worked very hard. And that was li my life, you know? And so as I started understanding what it was to have a feeling, number one, then I began to see when I was feeling a certain way, was my feeling relating to something happening in the world? Was it an old feeling that was coming up because of something that had been, you know, triggered in my life? Was my feeling in reaction to an injustice? I mean, it's certainly normal to be angry about uh, a child being hurt. So as I'm saying all of these things, I want you to be very clear that I'm not minimizing a feeling, but I'm also not giving it more credence than it should have. Here's what I mean. If I see an injustice being done and I'm angry, that's a normal reaction. But if I respond in anger, nothing usually will change. Usually it makes the problem worse, not better. But if I can work within um, whatever system there may be, say, to deal with this problem, chances are the problem will improve much better than if I'm just an anger ball flying at a situation. Let me get more specific with my own journey, and this will help you. Years ago, I was in a recovery meeting and a guy walked in and he was carrying like this little, it was a little bear, but it was just like this little bear. And I was like, I don't know who this guy is, but I'm going to sit by him. <laughs> and uh, there's a story here. So we, we became friends and I go, Hey, nice bear. It was like this, it was like, you know, six inches tall, this little stuffed animal bear, a grown man. And I wanted to describe the man to you. He had like this buzz cut and he was buffed out. Uh, he looked like a Marine. I found out later he was carrying this little bear stuffed animal. And so anyway, I said, hey, man, nice bear. He goes, thanks. And he told me his name and everything. And then we talked after the meeting. And uh, I said, so, so tell me about it. He goes, oh, you know, I'm doing inner child work. And he goes, I've really discovered, too, it's great for picking up chicks. He goes, <laughs> he goes um, women really want to women really want to know about this bear. I said, well, I certainly want to know. And so he said, every time I have a feeling um, and I want to go into reaction mode and I want to fix something, which is what I did as a kid, I, I hold my bear and, and I say, it's okay. In other words, his bear uh, began to represent his inner child. So, um, as, as, as fate would have it later, I started working with the same, um, with the same person to work on my own inner child work. And I began to understand the bear thing even more. So if I have a feeling that's really, really difficult to deal with, well, here comes bunny, right? And I go, and, and I talk to bunny as if bunny is my inner child, because if I have a feeling that I can't seem to manage and I want to go outward with it, it means that my inner child is totally triggered and I'm trying to run an adult life with a seven-year-old mm. or an eight-year-old, you know, whatever level many of us have had trauma, that's what comes out. And if we were in church, I would say, raise your hand if you've ever tried to solve a problem from a seven-year-old perspective. And I know every hand would go <laughs> up. Dave's raising his hand. <laughs> I'm raising my hand because we all have this. It's not like um, if you're wealthy, you don't have this. It's not like if you're white or black, you don't have this or how old you are, everybody has this, which is why I'm spending this much time on it. Everybody has this old archaic reaction that was to come up and hijack um, our process and our adult self. So uh, once I did the uh, deeper inner child work, I understood that the wounded child in me wanted to go out there, wanted to solve everybody's problem because this is the way this child received love. This child received love by going and helping when there was a problem. But a seven-year-old doesn't, should not be solving adult family problems. 
A seven-year-old should be doing what, Dave? What should a seven-year-old be, be doing? should be playing and running and drawing and... Playing and running and drawing and creating and doing imaginary stuff and, and goofing around and, you know, making faces and making messes. That, that's what a seven-year-old is supposed to do. Not make the family dinner and, you know, help everybody out and all that. So, so if, if I have a feeling that seems overwhelming and I all of a sudden see this energy come forward in me that's not healthy and I can't be with it, well, then that's when, that's when bunny comes in handy. <laughs> that's when fluffle bunny comes in. <laughs> and so how you do this is you talk to the bunny as if the bunny is your inner child. And you say, sweetie, and and um, let's see. I wish there was a way to film. How about like that? I'm going to do this. Okay. Uh, I would say, I know. Okay, little one. Okay, baby. Everybody called me baby as a kid, so that's why. Okay, baby, I hear that you really want to solve this problem for me. But you know what? You're little and I'm big. And so the adult me is going to take over. And I want you to go play because that's what little kids do. But I got this, okay? I got this. So even though I got scared, the adult me is going to handle this. I want you to go play. And then I take that, that bunny and I'll hold it to my chest. And I imagine my inner child running and going to play, which is what little kids do. And then the adult me can handle the situation. So it's a way to dialogue with your inner child and having something outside of you, a stuffed animal uh, uh, is nice because it's soft and, um, and it's very helpful in helping you get objective rather than being controlled by your feelings. And at the beginning, most people, myself included, feel a little dumb doing it. Because you go, oh, I'm talking to this animal. But I'm telling you, after a few times, you realize the sacredness of what you're doing. So if something as simple as talking to a stuffed animal can help you get your feelings on board and be where you are, then why would you not do it? So simple. So simple. And it helps me, rather than being controlled by a feeling, it helps me really be able to feel the feeling. And then, like most feelings, it releases. So this is what I wanted to tell you. So instead of running from feelings, what we can do when we feel them, we usually don't have to feel them very long. Once we completely feel the feelings, usually they release out and then something new comes forward for, for us. Like, what am I supposed to do next? If we're constantly running from the feeling, we don't know what we're supposed to do. And one of my friends, as a matter of fact, who, who was doing inner child work at, at a very, um, about the same time I was, said to me, you know, before I went to bed, I had so many feelings and I didn't know what to do. I wanted to use drugs. I wanted to call everybody. I wanted to check out. And I said, what did you do? And he said, well, I held my stuffed animal and cried myself to sleep. I said, and how did you feel the next day? He said, I felt whole. Mm. I felt whole because I didn't need anybody or anything to deal with my own feelings. I dealt with them myself. I didn't check out. I didn't make anybody wrong. I didn't attack anybody verbally. I didn't, you know, rave, uh, rage on the internet. What did I do? I sat with it. I had my feelings. So it's normal if we're scared to cry. So we cry and then that moves out. If we're in grief, it's normal to cry, to have those feelings. And as we give them their day, they move out. So when we're feeling the feelings, so the minister me is coming on board now. <laughs> when we are feeling the feeling, I went from therapist to minister there in just a minute. Um, as the, as the um, feelings are on board, when we have a deep abiding faith and we're doing our soul work, we realize that our feelings are there to tell us something. So I'm going back to the journaling of our feelings. When we're journaling how we feel, then on a regular basis, 
we're aware of what's coming up for us. So as we're journaling those things, these things come up, we go, oh, if five days in a row or three weeks in a row on a pretty regular basis, I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling frustrated. What is this telling me? What is this telling me? Not, okay, I felt the feeling, it's over. I felt the feeling, it's over. What are those feelings telling me? And what I've learned about frustration and anger is, if I am angry or frustrated, it means I am fighting with reality. It means I am not in a space of acceptance. It means I am fighting with what is. So I realized in my life that even if I'm not happy with something happening, I can still be in acceptance of what is. I know the frustration is not serving me. I know it is not serving me. And like everybody human, I still have my moments. But what I've noticed is as I am more and more aware of how I feel, the feelings don't control every interaction. You know, before the show today, I said, Dave, I need a minute. I said, the title of today's show is Be Where You Are. And if I'm being totally honest, at the moment, I don't want to do a show. I said, I'm just being real with that. As soon as I said it, I was ready to do a show. Mm. It was like, I just needed to have my moment of saying, you know what? I, at the moment, I don't feel like it. And Spirit was like, I don't care what you feel. Get to work. <laughs> But as soon as I felt it, and as soon as I named, okay, Dave, here's what's going on for me, I, okay, then it, it immediately, almost immediately released. I mean, it took, took a couple of minutes and then it released. So what I want you to know is the reason uh, feelings come up and the reason they keep resurfacing is because it needs to be owned and named. Because if it isn't, it will keep coming up until you deal with it. And it'll come out sideways. It'll come out as side comments. It'll come out uh, on the people you love. I mean, I just had to say to my son the other day, you know what? That was totally my stuff. I'm so sorry. That was all on me. You did nothing wrong. That was me overreacting. I'm sorry. He goes, that's okay, mama. He was, <laughs> he was fine. That's okay, mama. Like I knew, <laughs> you know, so, but then it can be named, then it can be dealt with, then it can be released. You know, I, I think of my growing up, what it would have meant to me for one of my parents to say, I'm sorry. I mean, that's something most of us never heard from our parents. Right. So as we own the feelings, as we do, as, as we can be with, with, you know, to be where we are means I experience the feelings. I know what's happening and I know I am bigger than what I am feeling. And this is where our faith comes in again. So the feelings are telling us something. As I mentioned, going back to my journaling, as I looked back and I looked back at like, maybe it was like a year and a half or two years ago. And I, there was a lot of frustration. There was a lot of pain. There was a lot of anger. And it's like, okay, something needs to change. So as I'm dealing with the feelings, what I know is these feelings that are running through my life, these feelings that I'm naming every day, Yes, they're showing me something about my soul, and it is what is moving me into my soul involvement and growth, because I know that my feelings are showing me places that I need healing, places where I need growth. So feelings are very important to be owned, to be named, because they are giving you valuable information about what needs to be healed what needs to be um, even acknowledged that you have healed through, but it is information to help you move forward on your soul's journey and act in your soul's best interest. If you are constantly frustrated, something needs to change. If you are happy and joyful, this is very good information <laughs> that you're doing what it is you're supposed to do. But if you can't be where you are, you'll never know. This is how the emotional work and the spiritual work work together. If emotionally I know where I am, if emotionally I can be where I am, up, down, high, low, mad, sad, glad, frustrated, 
And I go, wow, I'm really frustrated. I wonder what that's about. Instead of, you know, stop that and do that. And da, da, da. We all do this from time to time. If you've ever seen somebody in a constant, um, if you've ever seen somebody in a constant um, energy of this, you can see how damaging it really is. Be where you are very simply means I have a feeling, I'm aware of the feeling, and rather than running from it, I'm going to name it, I'm going to own it, and if I need to deal with it, I pull out little fluffle bunny, and or I talk to my inner child in whatever way works for me, and I get the adult me on board to know how to move forward. As I'm doing all of this, my faith is informing me. My faith and my soul work are going to work with whatever those feelings are to bring illumination, to bring guidance, to bring evolvement in my soul, so that as I can work with these feelings, I get to grow, evolve, and even, in fact, prosper. Because I'm aware of what's happening, and these feelings are telling me, these feelings are windows into my soul. So my encouragement to you, dear friend, is as hard as it might be right now, is to be where you are in your feelings. And nobody ever died from a feeling, I don't think. Even though it feels like it, if we feel it, it's very difficult at first. I want to encourage you to start doing this on a daily basis, as we are always talking about doing. Because as you journal, as you speak the feelings, then the energy of that feeling can move out of your body, and you can grow, prosper, and evolve into the person you were designed to be, into the soul you were designed to be. We look outside of ourselves for what it is we want. And in fact, what we want and what we need, we're with us all the time. It's known in the very heart and the very soul of you. So as you continue to do this work, you're going to find the incredible blessing that you are, the incredible blessing that God is that resides in your very own soul. As you are doing this mature work by feeling the feelings, letting them move in and through, and you know you are, are in fact, even more than your feelings, that the power of the Holy Spirit lives in you, that God is in you, and everything that's happening is for a purpose. So, as you can, dear friend, be where you are. Know always God is with you, you are being lifted in prayer by all of us here, by so many of us around the world, lifting you in prayer for God's highest and best. We see you being strong. We see you being courageous. And when you have the feelings, you feel them. You be where you are and you move through and heal. This is our prayer for you. This is our prayer for us. And we're in this thing together. So we thank you for blessing us today with your um with your time, with your energy. And we also thank all of you for your support. Thank you so much for your financial support of the show, for your listening, and for when you share it. Friends, we have a real desire to minister to people all around the world. So thank you for all the ways you share that. Our next show, we'll share maybe some more stats so you can know just how much we have grown and evolved and how much the show is blessing people all around the world. So thank you so much for joining us, dear friends. Blessings on the journey. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Authentic Spiritual Journey presented by Natural Awakenings Magazine and Zen Living Realty. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is also made possible through the continued support of our angel patrons, Dove Borland, Peter Gibson, Paul Caswell, Arlene Meyer, Kathy and Terry, Marsha Mott, Nora Miles, Diana Cox, Leslie Williams, Susanna Garcia, Shayla Mount, Dorothy Moore, Aggie Payton, Taryn Tucker, and Anna Evans. The Authentic Spiritual Journey is copyright 2020, Cynthia Alice Anderson, all rights reserved. Our theme music is composed by Dave Croft and used with permission from RR Hot Publishing. The Experience of the Soul podcast channel is a production of 818 Studios.